So this is something that I put together that isn't quite what you're used to seeing on this channel, i.e. my face. Rather, for this week's little vlog, I want to just read off something that I had been mulling around in my head after reading Soren Kierkegaard's Fear and Trembling. Now, I'm not done with the book yet, and once I am done with the book, I will probably discuss it, but it takes some time to process because Kierkegaard is... well... He tends to vomit words <laughs> in regards to his writing, and sometimes it takes a little bit for him to get to the point, so it's not an easy read. Regardless, though, I'm hoping that this little video in my perspective can help simplify the idea of faith to people who don't believe, and maybe for those of you who do believe, it'll give you a little bit of reinforcement. So here we go. Is faith the absence of reason? This is a question that I've struggled with quite a bit in the years that I've spent alone. Beyond that, it was one that I answered to myself when I was younger and then caused myself to doubt those previous conclusions. Now, to what end, I'm not certain. Then again, at the time, I don't think I was really concerned with any ends aside from the conclusion of my own life and on what terms I was going to have it. Thus, the ends didn't matter as much as they do now. Now, I've been afforded a new level of mental clarity. I feel that there's going to be a much greater ease in which I can tackle this idea. I can understand that on a surface level, faith in a higher power can seem like it's an abandonment of reason. I think that many humans can be empiricists in their nature. There has to be some sort of data for someone to form their opinions on. Opinions are not something that necessarily come from just thin air, unless maybe you're insane. And I mean that in a literal sense, because opinions have to be based on observations, factual or otherwise. There has to be some sort of a catalyst for an idea to exist. My tires are flat, therefore I cannot drive my car. The food is not cooked, therefore it is not suitable to eat. We can observe these and draw reasonable conclusions. In its nature, reason is meant to help us survive. It allows us to understand how to maneuver around our surroundings and continue our existence. To be frank, total abandonment of reason seems to be suicidal. It would mean the rejection of what we know, have observed, and also what we know to be the truth. Should you abandon the idea that the floor beneath you is solid and able to be walked upon? No, of course not. Because then there goes your method of getting out and procuring food. I mean, how are you going to get to the door? Well, I suppose you could procure food if you're keen to gnaw on your arms for sustenance. When I look at the word of God, I don't see any scripture that is asking a man or a woman to throw reason out the window. Though some may not like this fact, all of mankind has faith invested in something. Reason being is that faith is not the absence of reason whatsoever. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, defines faith as confidence in what we hope for and assurance of what we do not see. If anything, faith is not the absence of reason but rather a statement of trust in an authority superior to your own. I have faith in the knowledge of my doctors, that they will help me to become healthier than I am. I have faith that my mentors will teach me what I do not already know, so that I may better understand this world. Faith is a state of trust. At the time of this writing, I've been reading through Soren Kierkegaard's Fear and Trembling, as I mentioned earlier, and his observations of the type of faith required by a believer are incredibly accurate. Fear and Trembling as a novel has similarities to the beginning of Dietrich Bonhoeffer's The Cost of Discipleship in the sense that it paints a picture of the level of trust that God asks of us to have in him. Kierkegaard paints a picture of the strain that Abraham must have had mentally in the possibility of sacrificing his son Isaac. That the asking of such a sacrifice would ask Abraham to ignore all of the promises. All of that had to go out the window in obedience to God. Abraham was required to trust that God was not leading him down the wrong path. Basically, Abraham had to trust that God had the right conclusion in mind. And what that teleological endgame would come out to be was something that he had to believe in. That the knowledge of such a thing was beyond his understanding at that moment. Keep in mind that Abraham was not stopped on the path up the mountain in the region of Moria. Nuh-uh. Isaac had been bound, laid on the altar, and Abraham was about to cut him open 
before an angel appeared to Abraham, as it says in the scripture, and told him to halt. It was the ultimate test of trust. He was a knife's edge from sacrificing his son. This act is an indication of dedication to the idea that God's knowledge is infinite. Now, I don't think that God is in the business of asking us to sacrifice our children, nor would he ask someone to do that sort of thing ever again. That's what's implied in Genesis 22, verses 15 through 18. Rather, it's an example of what we have to sacrifice to have faith. Can it seem like we are abandoning our reason? Well, sometimes. At the same time, though, we have to keep in mind what we have faith in. Or rather, who we have faith in. Having faith in an ethereal deity that is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent is asking a man to realize his own mortality, his own limitations. It is not that we abandon our reason, but rather we realize that we are simply quite tiny in our stature. It is a trust in the greatness of our Lord, not necessarily an abandonment of what we have learned thus far. Thus, I suppose my encouragement for this video is that faith is something to be embraced when one has faith in the divine God that brought us to this point. That there is a purpose to our existence, and that our faith in Him will ultimately be rewarded. That sometimes the low points in our lives are not inescapable pits that we can never be relieved from, but rather is simply a tunnel, a rather dark one that we're passing through on the road that is our own existence. To conclude, let me say that God does not ask us to abandon our reason, or not consider what we already know to be true, but rather, He is asking us to acknowledge and trust that we do not know enough, and that He will always know infinitely more than we do. My name is Micah Curtis. Thanks for watching. Deus Volt.